informed ethical decision making, um, or do they need some more training? I think uh, any of the sequences students take in college in the field of public relations needs to have a very strong ethics course. And uh, it needs to be taught by someone who has some pretty hard and fast ground rules about what's allowable and what isn't. We take great care and teach them the PR and the law so they don't get in trouble with that part of PR. And we teach them very carefully about how to do financial reporting because we don't want them to get in trouble doing that. But we lack, I think, lots of times the ethic question of, is this the right thing to do? Is this the right way to do it? Am I doing something good for bad reasons? <laughs> or am I doing something bad for good reasons? And I think we need to sort that out. I don't think uh, children today get the same kind of parent parental teaching that maybe some of us got. And I think parents are busy and they assume the schools are gonna teach good behavior and how to behave and sometimes that doesn't happen. And so I think any course at any college that has a curriculum for public relations needs to have a very, very strong, that everyone has to take. And I think uh, by having the students have that kind of a focus, we say to them, look, it's important in PR that we tell the truth, that we act it out, that we do the Arthur Page principles because that's what it's about. And if the minute you lose the trust, you know, you've just forgotten. And the, with consumers, with your shareholders, with your employees, if you lose the trust, you've just lost the battle practically. It's so hard to get it back. And I think uh, one way to do that and force that idea of keeping the trust is to say, look, here's what ethical behavior looks like, and you present them with some problems. Here's the problem, would we do this, would we do that, which is the right way to go here? And it gets some interesting discussions in classroom because some will say, but we can't make as big a profit that way. And I said, well, is bigger profit more important than keeping a loyal customer? No. So I, I feel very strongly that, and one nice thing I think we're seeing a lot more people do what I did, go back and teach. I felt I was giving back. I'd had such good training and such good mentors that I thought the least I can do is go back. And I was offered a semester as a, I love the title, Distinguished Visiting Professor. Oh boy. <laughs> For a semester at Florida. And I liked it so much and the students seemed to enjoy me so much that I stayed on for 10 years. I turned around and said, Gee, I couldn't believe I'd even been there 10 years, but you learn from the students and uh, we're getting such bright, well-trained young people now and Betsy Plank and others have worked so hard to get the young people trained. And I think we've got good programs in place at many, many schools. So I think we're gonna have better PR people as a result. But I think it's good for old timers who can go back and say, that theory's right, but here's the way you put it in. If you do it this way, the CEO's gonna cut your ears off. But if you do it this way, you can, you can get it through and you can win. And I think that's what we need to go back and do and say, the theory's right, but here's how we make it work. Let's talk about um, an article that you wrote in 1995 that was called A Generation of Attitudes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked about the importance of tuning messages, which you've mentioned as we've talked, tuning those messages to a receiver's attitude. And you had given, you had talked about it with Cormier, walking into that room and realizing, looking at those individuals and realizing um, the attitude that, that they have that is mm -hmm. so different from where you were at the time. So um, <coughs> they, it, it's 2008 now, and of course the attitudes are constantly changing. So the, do the same problems that you faced at McCormick in the 70s, that disconnect, is that, still, is that still something that uh, current communicators need to be aware of and work with? We, we still have lots of disconnects. And I think because we can communicate so many more and many different ways, we have even more disconnects that we have to try to put together. That study uh, comes from a, a research paper that says by the time we're 21, 
we've pretty well formed our a list of our what we believe ethically, what our religion's going to be, what our attitude about work, and what our political ideas are going to be. And that's pretty well formed. And this study takes the proposition that these attitudes stay pretty consistent through the years, some of them, but some of them don't. And if you look at where we started in, say, the 50s, where the employee said, hey, give me a job, I'll work anywhere, I'll do anything you want me to do, to today, where we've gone through uh, the various uh, me generations and the X's and the Y's and all of those, to now that the employee is saying, hey, you want me to work for you, then you better be loyal to me. You better, you know, do something for me and what's in it for me. And then we get to, hey, if you say that's true, prove it with how you act. And so we're a lot more uh, demanding, I think. And I think younger generations expect more of companies. Uh, I think uh, we're looking at a time when they're worried about what their financial situation is going to be with companies, what kind of retirement plans and those kind of things, much more than we used to. We used to think, hey, if you went to work for a big company, you knew they were going to take care of you and take care of your health care and your financial benefits and all that kind of stuff. And, and nowadays, they have to ask those questions. And we have to make sure we can make the kind of connections that, and we have to understand that generation by generation, we keep some attitudes, but some other attitudes change. And we're not the same people we were in the 50s or the 60s. And I think that study, which uh, I'd love to do a new update version on to see really where we are today, because we've, uh, we've about run through the XYZ part. I mean, we're text, text. I think we're in the text thing, where everybody's text messaging to everybody. And, uh, and I think that's a problem too, because when we do messages so fast without thinking about it carefully, we sometimes send the very wrong message that we don't intend to. And I think there's a danger in that speed up of things. We rip off a quick answer and it's hard to know how it's received because <laughs> it might be the right answer, but the way it was done and the tone of it is terrible and sends the wrong message. So I think we have to watch those attitude carefully.